were you aware that the mob, drug cartels, and some gangs have the same organizational structure as those used in corporate America? This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys Radio, and this week my guest Gerald Zimmerman discusses it all in his book, Relentless. I've also got New York Times best-selling author James Swallow. We're going to talk about the latest in his Mark Dane series, Ghost. It all starts at 8 p.m. Pacific time on KCAA Radio here in Southern California, 102.3, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. The podcast and my YouTube drop tomorrow. Guys, guys, radio, thanks for your support. Writing fiction is really tough. And uh, believe me, I've been through the process. I was rejected 100 times on my first book. And what it did was it taught me how to write a book. And then I got my second book picked up, The Guy's Guy's Guide to Love, which is a rom-com about advertising. So it's out there. But I found James Swallow, uh, and he is he's done everything that any writer would. He's in the right position at the right time, and he's doing all the right things. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about him. He's a New York Times, Sunday Times, and Amazon number one best-selling author and script writer. Over 15 years' experience in fiction, TV, radio, journalism, new media, video games. It's a really fast-growing area, and if you're a writer, you might want to consider that because it sells like crazy. He's also a three-time New York Times best-selling author of more than 35 novels with over 750,000 books in print in nine worldwide territories. He was nominated for the BAFTA for his writing on the critically acclaimed Deuce X, Human Revolution. Uh, his website's uh, jswallow.com, but we'll get into that. But first of all, welcome to Guys Guys Radio, James Swallow, all the way from London, England. Robert, thank you so much for having me on. It's a real pleasure to be here. Okay. Well, I thought we would uh, spend our time talk about a couple things. We'll start with your uh, your Mark Dane books, because you've got a new one out that's a thriller called Ghost. And then we'll get into some of your other works, and then we'll talk about, if we have some time, your, your writing process, because I think people out there would be very interested in that. So let's start out with uh, Ghost, the new book. It's in the Mark Dane series. Um, who is Mark Dane? What does he want? And why can't he get it? Yeah, that's isn't that the eternal question? Why can't we get what we want? <laughs> Mark Dane, um, he is a character I created in, in my original novel in the series, which is uh, Nomad. Ghost is the third book in the series. Nomad was the first. Uh, second one was Exile. Uh, and no matter, uh, Ghost has just recently been released uh, in the in the United States, as you say. He is a kind of reaction to a lot of the action heroes that, frankly, I've been watching for years and years and years. You know, I love action stories. I love action movies. I love action thrillers. You know, I love that kind of that style of storytelling in all the different forms that exist: movies, TV, books, games, everything. But what I was finding was I was watching these stories and I kept thinking to myself, you know, that the heroes in these narratives, as exciting and, and as fun to watch as they are, they're all pretty kind of bulletproof at the end of the day. They were these kind of Teflon coated slick guys who would get into these crazy situations and it would be fun to watch them get through it. But I would find myself thinking, you know, uh, there's never a moment when I thought, is this guy actually going to, you know, is he going to come out of this badly is he going to die you know I, I never really felt like there was true jeopardy i always felt these characters were just too good and so i wanted to write about somebody who kind of had to run to keep up a little bit you know a guy who isn't the quickest with a gun he's not the strongest guy in the room he's not the one with the fastest quip you know somebody who's a little bit more ordinary who's but he's thrown into that world of, of action and adventure and there's a trope that you see if you watch uh, any action movie you always see the guy in the van you must have seen that right in a movie where <laughs> you, you've got the hero who is the door kicker and the trigger puller right and he's yeah. he's going into the room and he's shooting bad guys and then there's he's on the radio and there's a guy in the van out on the street and the guy's on a computer and he's working away and he's saying right. oh you know run a bypass for me you know do this hack into the security cameras what have you right and i asked myself the question what if the guy in the van had to do the other guy's job what happens if the guy in the van gets pulled out of his comfort zone and now he's the guy who has to be the door kicker and the trigger puller. He's the one who's on the run, who's being shot at, you know, and his life hanging by a thread. And that was the genesis of the character of Mark Dane as a guy who's a bit of a techie. He's a little bit of a nerd. I mean, he can kind of still handle himself in a fight. But like I say, he's not the toughest guy in the room and he has to kind of work for it. And I like heroes like that. I've always been a fan of characters like the two I always think of from movies is I always pick, pick out John McClane from Die Hard and in indiana jones 
<laughs> and you look at those guys, they're both good at what they do. You know, McLean is a cop and he knows what he's doing. Indy is like a, an archaeologist and he's an intelligent guy. But they're never they're never always the guys who kind of just walk through everything and, and come out untouched. They always come through their stories kind of bloody but unbowed. And you feel like they have earned it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write a character who earned it. So that was the genesis of Mark Dane, is this, this sort of tech-savvy character. In, uh, in these stories set in this kind of modern day world, I wanted to write a techno thriller that um, was inspired by the books that I used to read when I was a young man, when I was reading like Robert Ludlum and Ian Fleming and, and, and Tom Clancy, you know, these books in the kind of the, the 70s, 80s, 90s kind of era. I wanted to take the influences of those stories and say, OK, let's tell that kind of narrative, but let's put it today. Let's put it in this kind of 2020s. Let's tell a story that's through the lens of a kind of post WikiLeaks, post Edward Snowden, info security kind of, you know, technologically infested espionage story. Let's tell a narrative set in that world. And these things kind of collided together. And that was the genesis of the Mark Dane story. Got it. Fantastic. You know, I can only think of uh, your, you know, the what if, what if this character was thrown into the situation, the guy in the van became the guy outside the van. And the only movie I, that came to mind was uh, To Live and Die in L.A., which I thought was brilliant because you're really pulling for this main character. He's a real macho cop and uh, he gets shot about halfway through the movie, or maybe about two th thirds of the way through the movie. And his sidekick, who's a complete loser, has to take over. And uh final finalize the story and uh you know it really made for very intriguing a very intriguing story and film i don't know if you've seen that but that was really mm -hmm. uh they do it in a really great way but anyhow i love that idea of what you're doing with dane so in the uh in the three books how has um how has the uh evolution of the character and the situations uh changed oh he's i've, I've kind of toughened him up a little bit as he goes through the books you know so in in the first novel his team uh, is killed around him and he's framed for, you know, he, he kind of survives this attack on his, on his unit. Uh, and when he comes back to headquarters, they're like, well, you're the only guy who survived. So you must be in on this. So there's a conspiracy about who's, who's really behind this. He goes on the run to, and that's kind of the, the, the propulsive elements of the first story in, in Nomad. And in the course of that narrative, he crosses paths with a, a private military contractor run by um, an African billionaire. Uh, and the organization is called Rubicon. And these guys are basically kind of a private organization run by this guy as a philanthropist. And he essentially has formed an intelligence network, but with no national loyalty. So they're not loyal to one, any one country. They just are trying to do the right thing in the world, you know, pushing back against mm -hmm. bad guys and, you know, and taking down terrorists wherever they find them. So Mark crosses paths with these guys who are also looking into the same situation. And by the end of Nomad, you know, he's, he's teamed up with them and uh, he's offered a job, but he's like, oh, I don't know if I really want to take that, if that's the job I want to do. In the second book, he's working for the United Nations, uh, in a, a real life organization, actually, um, the, the Office of Nuclear, Nuclear Security, who check to see if you know, rogue nuclear weapons go missing or if people are trafficking in like, you know, radioactive material. They, these people are out there every day, you know, making sure this stuff doesn't get out into the world. And of course, in that story, he comes across a rogue nuclear device. So he helps the, the guys in Rubicon, this organization, to sort of uh, track that down. And by the end of that story, he's part of the Rubicon team. And in the third novel, as Ghost opens up, this is a story about um, offensive computer hacking. This is a story about bad guys, dangerous terrorist hackers using weaponizing social media and, and you know computer technology to kind of foment a confrontation between North and South Korea. And again, Mark and the Rubicon team are, are drawn into that. And with each novel, what I'm trying to do is kind of evolve his character because I don't want him to be static. I don't want him to be the same guy he is right. in like book three or four as he is in book one. I want to try and show him evolving, growing. He's gradually growing into being the hero.